and, and we are good to go. Oh, so as Milibo is, uh, well, I thought I saw it, uh, oh, it's working now. So uh, I forgot something really important here, a couple of things that I forgot as, as we allow her to transition here. So uh, Milimo also happens to be the current treasurer for uh, ICTAS, right? Uh, so um, if you haven't paid up, uh, if you haven't paid your membership fees here, I would I'd strongly encourage you to do that, right? They are clamping down here. Um, and then I was, I was also mentioning to Milimo before we started that uh, uh, we extended the invitation to a few female students uh, that are part of uh, courses that we, we help coordinate. Um, and we're hoping maybe towards the end, if time allows, maybe, and I know this is going to be off tangent, maybe Milimo could, could tell us a bit more about uh, possibly some initiatives that ICTAS are doing to try and encourage more participation from, from females. Uh, the stats in our courses are quite shocking and disappointing, really. Uh, more than 50% or more than 60% in certain instances, 60% uh, of students are actually male, right? So question really is, uh, can you do more to try and encourage uh, females to be a part of a part of what we are calling as ICTs? Anyway, middle my floor is yours, thanks. Representation or you want me to answer that? Well, you can answer it towards the end. Let's just go with the presentation. Okay, you perfect. Can it towards the end. I'll okay. remind you again. Yeah. Not a problem. You can ask me now? Yes, yes, we can see your screen now. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to give a presentation. Um, it's quite an honor. So today I'll share my experience on data mining and data warehousing in telecoms. Um, as you've already heard, I've uh, been with Zamtel for it's going to seven years now. Um, I uh, was MIS manager. Um, for about uh, six years. So I'll just take you through what really happens behind the scenes when we're talking of data mining and data warehousing. So I'll say yes. my presentation layout, uh, we'll look at the introduction, we'll look at what data warehousing is, we'll look at the ETL tools that we've used in industry and what data mining really is. Then we'll move on to the stages of the data mining. Then we'll discuss the point on why is there a big deal about data mining. Then we'll look at the data mining techniques that we have employed. We'll look at the end user, then we'll move on to the end user presentation. We'll briefly look at the real industry challenges that we have faced. Then we'll have a conclusion, then question and answer session. Are we okay now? Yes, we are fine. We're good. All right. So as I was saying, the telecom industry is a very vast uh, growing industry, which has uh, vast and or big data. This data is uh, mainly from network elements and various other data sources on the network. And um, the data basically is the base of a telecoms um, company. As far as we're concerned, CDRs is revenue. CDRs is, is that data is, tra does translate into revenue. And uh, we got it jealously to ensure that we account for the CDRs on the network. Um, so data is indeed the, the base of telecoms industry. And this is the data that we collect from various uh, um, network elements. So I was talking about the base stations, I was talking about uh, the SMSCs, that is the, 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 sh uh, the, the short messaging service center, I was talking about the MSC, that's where the voice calls also come through and so on. I also mentioned the, the HLR, which is the home location register. So these are the elements that will capture a lot of transactions that are happening from the customer side. So at the end of the day, we would have collected raw CDRs. And these CDRs are, is what we use eventually in the data warehousing in data mining. 
So we've used this information for us for day-to-day -day purposes. So we'll go into details why we do this and why it's important for us. Uh, as much as we have a lot of information, you can have a lot of data, but if you do not translate that data into information and knowledge, it does not make sense to the telecoms industry. We use that information to ensure that we get knowledge out of it and get uh, deep insight into the data so that we make uh, decisions um, and um, also deal with various uh, issues that we'll discuss as well. So let's uh, deep dive right now. So what is data warehousing? Data warehousing is a process in data warehousing of pulling data out of the source systems so, and putting it into a data warehouse. So we can have various systems. We would have um, an Oracle ERP system, we would have a customer relationship management system, we would have a billing system, we would have data in flat files, we would have data from the mobile money system, we would have data from any other digital system that we have on our network. So what we do is we pull data from all those systems into a central location, okay, which is a data warehouse. So for us to get to that stage of pulling the data into the data warehouse, we have various processes that we undertake. And these processes are encompassed under the acronym ETL, which is extraction, transformation, and loading. And this data warehousing process has to take place before data mining. So all this has to take place on in the back end, on the side of the, the engineers. The engineers are the ones in charge of this. They have to work on um, queries to extract information from various um, data sources and push that information into a data warehouse. So what is the characteristics of the data warehouse database? The databases that we're coming from, the relational database uh, management system, the, whether it's a flat file, whether it's a structured or non-structured database, that information, especially when we're talking about, sorry, when we talk about the relation database, you'll find that these are transactional databases. This is where transactions are taking place. Information has been inserted into the database, it's been updated, it's been deleted, you know, under special circumstances, and so on. So you find that transactions are happening on, on these databases. Now, when we come to the data warehouse, which is the OLAP, Online Analytical Processing. This database is not editable. Once we get information from the operational or transactional database and we put it into the data warehouse, we do not edit that information. That information is read only. And these databases can have information going as far back as five years, three years, seven years, we basically have a lot of historical information in the data warehouse. And in addition to that, databases are subject oriented. The characteristics of different databases in the warehouse that, are, that make them relevant to a particular area. If we want data for sales, we want data specific to marketing, we want data specific to the network, we will configure the data warehouse accordingly to have that sort of information available. Now let's look at data extraction. What is this? As I say, the, the acronym ETL, the E is for extraction. This is where we configure queries to extract data specific columns or specific data from specific databases. And these databases, as I mentioned, are billing systems, customer management systems, network elements, 
the CRM, you've got the ERP, flat files, and so on. You can have many others. I've also mentioned mobile money system. We're already pulling data from mobile money system for our day-to-day decision-making. So the data extraction is done in such a manner that it does not affect performance. We normally do not extract data during the day. Normally, we don't extract data during the day. In telecoms, we normally report uh, D minus one or T minus one. We, we report the day for the day before. Um, and the extraction of data is done normally during the night. So that particular processes, not just one process, there'll be several processes that will be running, which will be pulling data from various systems. Like in a case like a sensitive system, like the billing system, we put data starting from zero one hours, and the process can take as long as zero, it can take up to zero five the process of extracting the data will be running and it will be running. Because the importance of doing this is so that we do not um, affect the performance of the billing system. And in addition to that, uh, the marketing team are also very demanding people. They also expect data to be available when they come into their offices the following day. So we have to ensure that those processes are running perfectly and are, and are running on time as well. Yes, there are times when we do have technical issues. And when we have technical issues, we have to manage the team. We have to manage the user expectation. Sometimes you find that if we do not extract certain data for usage, the following day we would have to rerun the processes during the day. That is an exceptional case. During the days, so that we are able to update the data warehouse with the necessary data. Okay. Then once we extract the data, what happens? We have to clean the data. We have to filter it. We have to validate the data and apply certain rules of splitting, of joining that extracted data. The times when we can have data which is maybe duplicated, it could be duplicated maybe because a customer, uh, a customer executive or customer service executive has maybe duplicated the entry of data, okay? So we'd have to clean up the times when there could be technical issues on the, on the network and you find that data is corrupted and so on. So we'll have to ensure that we clean up, clean up the data as much as possible. We form, reformat the data. If it's maybe syndicating female or male and in our target database, we store that information as a M or F. So would would uh, reformat that data accordingly to suit the target database. So the objective of transforming is to load the extracted data into the target, target database with clean and specific uh, 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 with clean data which is specific or is in a general format uh, according to the target database. So an example I've given here is. Um, we have source A and source B, and the sources have uh, the date formats. Um, source A has date format DDMMYY, and source B has the format YYMMDD. But you find that the target database has got a different format, okay? Has got a different format for argument's sake. It has MMDDYY. So we have to reformat this using queries, using functions on the side of the, of, um, you know, of the system of transforming. We reformat this so that we, by the time it gets to the target database, it's in a specific format, in a standardized format. Data loading. 
once we have transformed the data, we now load the data into specific target tables, okay? So we would have specific tables of the data warehouse which will keep that information that has come from the data sources but has been cleaned, has been formatted, you know, um, and so on. So this data is uploaded um, and more than half the times we do incremental loads. We do not load an entire database. The only time maybe an initial load would be done is if you're uh, coming, if uh, your data warehouse is uh, a new one and you want to configure it and you want to start using it and you get the, all the data from particular sources in order for you to start using the data uh, warehouse. So normally we do incremental loads. And then as we all know, and as I've already mentioned, there's a lot of data that we're dealing with. So incremental loads is what is really working for us. So what ETL tools have, uh, have we used? Um, Specifically at Zamtel, we've used uh, Microsoft SQL Server integration services. That's what we are using, and that's what we've used for a very, very long time. Okay, and then there are also examples of the other uh, tools that I have not used, I'm not familiar with, but I can uh, definitely let you know that uh, we use SQL Server integration services. So once we've done the data extraction. We've transformed, we've loaded it into the data warehouse. What happens? What is the end game to doing all this? So we want to data mine. Now what is data mining in this case? Data mining is the process used to extract usable data from large set of data, okay? And in this case, the, the raw data. And from there, we want to draw patterns. We want to extract patterns from the data so that we get more insight from the data. So this implies conducting data analysis on data patterns in big data using specific available tools or software. So data mining is also known as knowledge discovery in data. So we have in the image below, uh, data there from the various data sources, which is extracted using the ETL processes into the target, into the target data, into the data warehouse. The pre-processed data is now pre-processed in the data warehouse, transformed, and now is giving us the patterns. These patterns would come up in graphical form, in charts, and so on. And this was then translated to specific knowledge that is attained by the, you know, the business executives or business users who want to understand this information further based on the patterns that they have, uh, that they have gotten from the, from the data warehouse. Okay. Now, the data mining patterns, as I mentioned, they're in graphical form. They'll come out uh, in specific uh, graph or bar charts and so on using uh, using um, the various dashboards that uh, we have in specific tools. So you find that the, the patterns will highlight highlighted will be based on statistics. So the business users will be able to, tr to understand what's happening based on the customer patterns and so on, or have a customer usage pattern, okay? And then they'll be able to develop a course of action based on interpretation. Before then, the business users will probably have an hypothesis they would want to solve a problem. Why is it that, uh, an example would be, why is it that customers are leaving the Zomtel network? What's going on? What's happening? Okay. Then would extract 
they will extract certain information, certain reports from the dashboards, which will perhaps tell them that maybe the packages are too expensive. Ever since an increment was uh, took place on a particular package, the usage dropped, customers stopped buying that, then eventually customers will start leaving the network or the chain process takes place where the customers now move on to the next uh, network provider. So they would come up, they would have a hypothesis that they would be working with. So based on the pattern that they'll see from the data that has been uh, displayed from the dashboards, okay, uh, they'll be able to come up with some kind of interpretation or conclusion on that particular issue that they would want to resolve. So what are the stages of data mining? The stages of data mining, we already have mentioned that we have the data sources where we have the various databases, okay? And more than half the time, they would really want to understand to solve a problem or come up with a new promotion or introduce new packages, okay? New packages for customers or understand the, you know, um, to ensure that there is no revenue leakage and so on. So they would use this information in various ways. So they would have a problem. That's probably, the, that, that's defined. Then there will be data exploration or gathering. And this stage in, includes sampling and transforming, transformation of data. Okay. Once that takes place, there is now the modeling part. The users will create a model, okay? They will create, uh, whether it's the, the graphs, the, 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 the charts and so on, to try to understand. I remember before, before um, the time when I was in uh, managing MIS, we were using a lot of Excel. A lot of Excel, yes, it was manual then. It was really manual, uh, very painfully so. But we, ha we, we, we formatted the Excel in such a way that if you put data in an Excel um, sheet, then the graphs would change accordingly. But we have since moved away from, from, from such. Okay, then the last stage is deploying the models, where they'll take action based on the results from the models, okay? So what is the big deal with data mining? Why are we focusing so much on data mining? And big data is the talk on everyone's mind um, with the coming up of 5G, not so much in Africa so far, but uh, it will come eventually. So what is the big deal about data mining? So you find that uh, data mining is used in the marketing by marketing departments um, to understand the customer usage pattern, to understand the payments, and you know work around coming up with packages and solutions so that we reduce problems such as churn. I am so sure even our competitors, uh, MTN, Airtel, have felt the pain of churn. Churn is a known problem worldwide. So it's not just telecoms, it's uh, churn happens in even, even other sectors, business sectors. So they would, the marketing department, uh, more than half the time, they are the biggest customer to the MIS department. They feed on data, they, they live on data. For them, it's very important for them to get this information on a daily basis. One hour cannot go in the morning without them, you know, having to look at uh, the data that comes from the system. They, they need to be on top of the game. So with marketing, it's a big, uh, it, it, it's a big uh, plus for them to have this data on their fingertips. And one of the usages for, if you want to increase revenues, how do you increase revenue if you do not understand your, your data? If you do not have, understand your customer's you know, payment pattern 
or usage pattern. So for them to increase revenues, they have to understand the pattern. Then they can come up with different promotions, their different packages. So that's why you find that there's one culture for a particular group of uh, segment of customers because they've understood that the particular segment of customers will definitely go for such a package. Okay, if it's a student package, they will also come up with a specific package and so on. All right, so another way is also to the usage of uh, data mining is to cut costs, to improve customer relationships. If you understand your customers, you understand the way they use data, uh, they use the, the, the voice SMS and so on, you can come up with, uh, with a good package. The famous um, um, caller user group, okay? Caller user group, you come up because you know that maybe these guys like calling each other and so on, then you come up with things like that, all right? And then another usage for data mining is to detect uh, fraud. Telecom industry has had challenges with fraud and will have challenges with fraud. It happens all the time. So they, we have to ensure that the mine data, there is no, they, they, we, 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 we try to stay on top of the game by tracking information and capturing details on fraud. There are specific systems that are there to bust fraud, so to say, okay? And those same systems also have algorithms. But they have to mine that data. They have to use the data from data mine, uh, data warehouse, or some of them actually straight from, um, from systems like the mediation, okay? Where they have proper raw data, then they use that data to detect the fraud and so on, okay? Then we have um, a usage for products and services. Uh, they, if the marketing department will want to know which products and services yield the highest amount of profit, they also use uh, the, the data mining also uh, helps them in that. All right. Then um, network fault isolation. Okay. Um, when there are faults on the network, we're able to get that information from the same network elements that I mentioned, and they'll be able to alert us that there's a fault and so on. Yes, they will have their own monitoring, but also this, the data mining also helps us know that if it is a particular problem. Okay. At the end of the day, data mining is used to accelerate decision making. As I said, marketing department, the marketing team have to stay on top of the game. They have to stay on top of the game in order for them to make uh, decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so the same way if they have to enter new markets, they use data mining and so on, all right? Data mining techniques, what have we used in telecom? Okay, I'll share what we've used from my point of view from my experience, okay? Um, some of the techniques that have been used in the industry. Uh, classification, okay? Data mining uh, techniques, classification, which arranges data in predefined groups based on machine language and which uses mathematical techniques. Um, one thing I can say is that random forest is one modeling uh, technique that has been used or that is actually being used on data sets, okay, such as voice data, SMS, and um, that's being used using Python language and this is helping us um, come up with a chain prediction, okay, so that we're able to predict which customers are about to leave us and so on and we quickly come up with a uh, uh, packages, specific packages for, the, for those customers to retain them. I must mention that it is very, very expensive to get a customer to, the, it's more expensive to get a customer than to retain a customer. 
So the efforts for us to put in in data mining in order for us to predict chain and so on and to retain the customers are worth it. Okay, so we try to also reduce cost by ensuring that we have these uh, techniques, uh, we use these techniques wisely. Then uh, the other mining techniques, uh, data mining techniques, I've just put them there for academic purposes. I'm sure you all know already, but uh, the one that I would make mention is um, the association rule, the learning and searching of relationships between variables. Okay, and the marketing team would use this to identify the products and services that customers frequently purchase together. Okay. Right, so we'll move on to the next stage. So end user data presentation. What is it? The analytics and getting into more insight which will help decision making and see what can be seen at first look. What cannot be seen, sorry, at first look. On the data warehousing side, we have on the data mining side, sorry, we have a business intelligent tools that we, we, we use. And these tools are the ones that help us come up with various dashboards or various reports. And the information that is now used as knowledge for us to make the decisions. So these are examples of uh, some of the BI uh, solutions that are there on the market. Specifically, Zamtao uses Microsoft Power BI and uh, has worked out well for us and we're using it efficiently. Um, okay. Um, so the tools are used to transform data into information and information into knowledge. Okay, so I'll give a use case, a very, very brief use case. I hope it will make sense. We've got a group A subscribers, okay? This particular group does not buy bundles, but they buy voice, okay, for the on-net packages. So just calling within Zamtel, they would uh, use, uh, they would buy voice, but they wouldn't buy bundles. Then we've got another group of subscribers. They would buy bundles and not buy voice, on it packages okay so this picture is just the dashboard the sort of dashboard that we have uh, from the power bi okay right so subscriber group um b the group b subscribers when we look at the dashboard if we have this information and we do um detailed uh, analysis the results that we get is that the Group B subscribers is 38% more than the Group A subscribers in terms of subscriber. So the sub sub subscriber numbers for Group B are more. And as I said, Group B was the group that buys bundles and the don't buy voice on net packages, okay? Then the Group A subscribers has more Apple, which is the average revenue per user than the group B subscribers. So the group A subscribers, they spend, seem to spend more, despite the fact that the group B are more in numbers. So the group A subscribers have better income in calls, and also they also have income, better income in calls than group B subscribers. So this is sort of information that you get from, the, from data mining. So you get graphs or charts and so on, which will give you this sort of information in graphical format, okay? Then as a marketing team, they would come up with a conclusion that they need to, to develop more segmented offers and push for more below the line activities. So this is sort of information that they'll be dealing with and, sort of, and they'll, they'll make a decision based on what uh, the insight that they've gotten, okay. So it's important for data mining um, in order to get the 360 degree view. And this allows us to have cross product view and see how various products interact over each other for customers. 
So therefore, allowing insight on where the potential risk of uh, APU or average revenue per user erosion. So the last thing any telecom company would want is for customers to reduce their usage on the, on the network. So we have to quickly move in and uh, we have to monitor this closely and we move in to come up with the solutions or packages. So by so, um, so the potential risk of uh, average revenue per user erosion and by how much and by much so corrective measure can be taken from the marketing point of view and reduce bleeding. What are the challenges? Is it all rosy uh, when it comes to working in um, whether it's MIS or in behind the scenes? or even just generally, is it all rosy? Um, managing, as I said, managing customer chain in time is, is a challenge and this is something that uh, the telecoms industry is really working very hard to be on top of the game for. Um, so before a customer leaves the network, we really, we need to know, we need to know we need to know when what's happening before the customer leaves. We don't want the customer to leave, so we really need to understand their usage, their pattern. Maybe they used to make phone calls. All of a sudden, they stopped. Before you know it, three months will pass and the customer falls off the network. So we have this challenge, and we have to ensure that uh, we have uh, the technology to, to manage the churn on the network. Then, in my opinion, there's skilled manpower in machine learning. Um, I, I believe that we haven't really picked up on machine learning that much. And I think that the field that uh, can be exploited by students like yourselves and people, you know, who be interested in, in this uh, particular topic, um, we, we, need, we need these skills. These skills are really needed. Um, we talk about data scientists. Um, I haven't come across many data scientists. And there is potential, not just in telecoms, in almost every sector. Because if we're moving on to 5G, we're moving on to proper big data. Almost every device will be emitting data. We're already talking of smart cities. We've seen in Lusaka where we've got cameras all over the place. So those cameras themselves will be, you know, they do have, they are generating data. So it's a sort of data um, um, skills that we need. we need. We need those skills. So we definitely, I think we have, uh, we, we have a gap in, in that area. Then the cost of uh, business intelligence systems, um, the, Last time I dealt with this, uh, they, they were quite expensive. They, they were quite expensive. We're talking of uh, almost half a million dollars and so on. Others were talking of over close to a million, you know, dollars for a package for, for a business intelligence package. Sometimes I think, okay, can't we develop one in the country or several of them? It's a it's a challenge that I leave there. So. Yes, you do find, yes, telecoms companies will use um, IBM, Cognos, they'll use Power BI and so on. The most expensive ones would be SAP and so on. So it's, it's, it depends on how, 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 how much a telecom company is willing to spend. Then we also have the challenge of the high use expectation. As I mentioned, we've got our biggest customer, which is the marketing department. They are hungry for data. They are hungry for insights. We have to manage them. And I've also mentioned that the times when, unfortunately, technical issues do happen, um, you'll find that uh, the ETL did not run. As a result, the data was not loaded into the data warehouse. So what happens? Okay. 
So we have to manage the expectation. We have to assure them that, uh, um, that they need to give us a couple of hours to deal with, uh, with the issue. And um, so that we are able to give them uh, the, the, the data as they, as they expect. Then the data structuring and system optimization on the data warehousing part, um, it's something that um, needs to be perfected. Um, optimizing the systems um, where you have, there is serious demand on the performance of, um, of, of, of the systems. So you find that we have to ensure that we work with the systems administrator in order for them to help optimize the systems as much as possible. Then this also brings me to the balancing of resources. Can we, should we, or can we give access all to the business intelligence system or, you know, um, to everyone in the company? To be honest with you, the, it can be quite demanding on the resources, assuming that we give to everyone. So what we've had to do in the past, is it, it's also logical not to give everyone because this is business in, intelligence. This is information, you know, we do not want every Jim and Jack to have access to it. So we have limited access we ensure that uh, those who need access are given access and um, as i said we ensure that uh, the resources are you know shared as much as possible so that all necessary departments have access to to to, to the information security and social challenges this data most of more than half the times is personal um, from the telecoms point of view, I can know where you are when you make your phone calls, when you're sending your SMSs, I can tell where you are and what time and so on. So you find that we also, as much as we are all excited about big data and so on, there's also the issue of security and uh, ensuring that there is privacy. We lock the key on this data as much as possible so there's privacy and only those who need access to it have access then lastly we have um last but not the list the data quality yes we do have challenges of noise in data um sometimes we have missing data maybe some network element was not working properly sometimes we also have uh, corrupted data Maybe the, some sect of a database uh, went down or something. Some sect of a database uh, went down or hard drive. So these are the issues that uh, we have faced. And we also have issues of duplicated data. If it's a, talking of customer relationships system, we're dealing with human beings here. And human beings sometimes would enter more than data more than once. So we also have to deal with things like that. Data formatting, yes, from the data sources to the target database, we have to format the data. So we have to work with this, with, with this on um, to ensure that data is formatted for the target data uh, database. The times when, because of numerous formatting, the system performance might not be as good. And the more data you have, the more formatting you have to do, and the more processing power is needed, and so on. Then we also have incomplete data sets. There are times when there is incomplete data sets, and that does happen. OK, so in conclusion, data analytics in our times in our 21st century has become very, very important. It's a key differentiator in the telecom environment when it comes to the battle for competitiveness as well as the battle to preserve internal value. I'm so sure you have seen some of you, I know, I, I know a number of you who are in telecom and others, some of you are not, but I'm, those who are not, I'm sure you've seen how aggressive 
the telecom companies are in you know in in this business we are all competing for you know for for the for the same customers so we have to ensure that we use data analytics as much as possible we have to ensure that we employ this technology as much as possible in order to stay on top of the game so it's a must to have more flexible granular performant data warehouse in order to obtain the depth required in business intelligence when it comes to the volume of data understanding revenue by lines of product reload from all various channels or data sources and moreover a full understanding of customers who are a central point of the business we have to understand our customers uh, i'm sure um, i can never overemphasize the importance of customer relationship it, it's very important and as telecoms we have to understand the customers we have to understand their needs and give them the required the specific packages that they need to use on our networks so data mining technology keeps evolving to, to keep pace with the limitless potential of big data and affordable computing power. We are for we the time when I was in MIS, we we're forever on the on the case of uh, um, our database administrators, our you know database administrators, we were forever demanding for computing power because it was it never seemed to be enough. So good thing we run virtualized environments so they could give us when uh, when as an as need be. So we were forever asking for computing power and you can never have enough. We are forever processing more and more data. As time goes, we, there's more and more data coming onto the network. The more value you can deliver and the more value you can deliver the more revenue you can generate so based on the data that we have gotten from data sources we move to the data warehousing we mine that data using the business intelligence we now are able to make the decisions at, a, at the you know in at the in the quickest possible time in order for us to improve our businesses okay so the, that's all, that's the end of my presentation. I guess we shall move on to the questions and answer session. All right, uh, thank you so much. That, that was, uh, well, for me, it was a very nice way of uh, going back in time. I'm when I was an MIS slash business analyst myself. So this was really good. Uh, that's so, good to hear. <laughs> right. So, so before I invite questions, right? I just so um, just one thing I want to draw attention to here. I'm just curious. Um, so I don't know how much of uh, the Zambia National Public Health Institute you you know. Uh, so one of the things we've been doing during this so-called COVID pandemic, and I'm posting a link in the chat, is they generate what they call situation reports. Right now, in those situation reports, they um, among other things highlight grand challenges that they're experiencing right so it turns out that one of the things that is cited in the most recent report is the inadequate electronic tools for field operations and uh, electronic data capturing um my, my question to you though is to what extent can we use the data that you collect to help with contact tracing right now, now i know we are miles away from what the chinese are doing right with uh, social credit uh, score systems, like they are mass surveillance systems. But do you think that we can, do you think that it's possible for us to use the data that you collect to try and do some sort of superficial contact tracing? Uh, I have a whole bunch of questions that I was writing down, but I'll wait for the others to, to ask their questions. But I just thought I would mention this before I lost my train of thought. Uh, and part of the reason I'm raising this, by the way, is because behind the scenes in one of our other uh, WhatsApp group for senior computer science postgraduate students, um, I think the postgraduate coordinator was hinting at the fact that they are putting together something to try and see uh, what it is we can do as computer scientists to help with the efforts currently being made. So I, I, I don't know if you 
you'll be able to comment on whether there's something we can do with CDRs and whatever data you collect to try and help with contact tracing during COVID-19. Okay, uh, your question is that what can we do in order for us to trace the contact persons? Yeah, do you think we can use CDRs? You, know, you, you made mention of the fact like, oh, you yeah, know, know where yeah. you are when you're calling, yes. But so do you I think, think, we, I, can I, I, I think I, I think we can, I think we can. Um, when, okay, assuming that you know, you know an individual who has um, contracted COVID, okay? And we, we would you, you would wish, okay, just him making the phone calls probably is just not enough. Okay, what, what I'm trying to say is that um, just me calling you does not necessarily mean that you contract. But uh, we'll sh using the CDRs, we should, we, could, we should be able to know where you reside in the first place, where you spend the most of your time and so on. You can come up with that information. That information is certainly there. Then, you know, when it comes to marking the hotspots, you know, we can start with that. We know that, yes, this particular person lives in this area. We need to ensure that we visit that area and maybe do tests or something, you know, to find out how many others in that uh, area have, uh, have contracted that disease. So using the site information, we, should, we are able to track where this particular individual stays or lives and so on. I hope I have answered your question. Yeah, you, you have actually, since, yeah, you have. Thank you for that. Uh, please, the, the floor is open, people, if you have uh, questions to ask. We're especially keen to hear from uh, 57 foot one student seeing as there are aspects uh, of what we've discussed with regards to the CRISP-DM model that have been brought up. So issues to do with missing data and the duplication, right? So the floor is open. Please feel free to ask if you have a question. You don't have to be a CSC 5741 student, by the way. You can ask away if you have a question.